Oh, back from the junk store. Let's see what I got here. Paper. All right. So I got uh, I got some cables. They had some uh, had some SMA cables. I hadn't seen those before. And uh, most of my little SMA cables are you know like four inches, six inches or short. I was looking for some longer ones. So uh, uh, these are pretty nice. Uh, these are oh gosh, these are about three feet long. One, two, yeah, maybe about three feet long. And they look. Uh, Look like good connectors. Definitely been boogered up some. Oh, somebody's been somebody's been using these, but uh, they look pretty nice. And these are what kind of cable are these? Uh, is the cable marked? Huh. Cable is not marked. So anyway, feels like uh, what was that? RG two 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 three or two three three? I forget two 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 three. I think. Anyway, got two of those. Uh, five dollars each for those, and then these little guys. These are cool. I'm not sure what kind of what kind of coax this is. Uh, these are not marked either. Obviously, out of some uh, assembly, because uh, it has a uh, has a label on it, kind of like one of those avionics things. Um, and uh, nice little right angle connectors. These are about two feet long. So I got three of those. Those were uh, three dollars each. So. That's pretty good. So I got lots more cables. You never have enough cables for sure. And then uh, what I went for was some capacitors, and they didn't have the value I needed. I was very disappointed. But I got a bunch of other capacitors that are around the same value, so hopefully I can make something work. I was looking for a 2700 picofarad, and the closest I could come up with was 20. 400 so hopefully that's close enough so give that a try and I got some other ones just because they were cheap and I can always use more capacitors and then I found these little guys so I'm not exactly sure what these are Let's zoom in a bit here um, these are supposedly uh, crystal filters that's how they were labeled crystal filters but they're filters of some kind and I have no idea what frequency but they were 10 cents each so a Bought some so I could tear one apart, take a look, and try to measure one. So those will be those will be a good video. Then uh, they had a box of these, and it was a little bit more than I wanted to spend, but I thought, ah, for the channel. And um, I'm hoping that the phase noise on this is really really low. I'm looking for a really really low phase noise so oscillator. And uh, this is a you put 15 volts in and it oscillates and it has a uh, SMA connector on it. And it's supposedly 176.384. That sounds pretty accurate. 176.384. Does have a thing here called frequency adjust. And I don't know if it's how it's accomplished with these with these things. And then there's this little plug here. So I'm not sure if that plug removes and that's the frequency adjust. These just look like uh, hardware screws. So I'm thinking it might be that thing there, but I have no idea how that plug comes out. Anyway, I don't really care about the frequency. I just want it to be uh, stable and really, really low phase noise. I guess that's the same thing, isn't it? Anyway, um, not familiar with this company. Will Manco, Moore Park, California. Moore Park. Where's Moore Park? Nine three. It must be down in Southern California. I'm not familiar with it. Um, yeah, but they had a bunch of those. It was twenty dollars though. So okay. Um, anyway. So I think uh, let's go ahead and hook this up and uh, see if it oscillates and see if it's uh, see if it's pretty quiet or not. All right, there we go. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> I don't see much going on over there, so not a lot of harmonics. Let's uh, let's zoom in a bit. We'll do a frequency. We'll start it at uh, 100 megahertz and we'll go out to 500 megahertz. There we go. There's a little tiny, tiny, tiny things down there. Let's do a stop of uh, 400 megahertz. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so I had a viewer ask about measuring these tiny little things. They had a Rigel uh, spectrum analyzer, which should be really nice. Um, 
I would think it'd be, uh, you know, fairly calm. It's a, it's a modern machine, so, it's, you know, I don't know if it's as good as this one, but it, it's probably pretty comparable, I would think. I know that they, the resolution bandwidth of those things are crazy. Um, so I would think it would have a pretty low noise floor. Um, this one has 130 dB noise floor, which is probably ridiculous, but, but they were having a hard time seeing these little things. And one of the reasons they had their, uh, um, their bandwidth too, too, too wide. Uh, so let's, let's uh, lower our bandwidth. You can see our noise floor just went down. We'll lower it again. There, our noise floor just went down again. So now we can see those, uh, see those spikes really easily. Um, so let's do a peak search. And we're here at minus 7 dBm. I have a 20 dB uh, attenuator in, in series, so. Um, and then the, uh, if I do a delta marker and I go try to find one of these peaks, this little peak is down by 60 dB. That's pretty good. That one's down by 60. And this little guy, this little guy's down by 63, six, yeah, 63 dB. So, uh, yeah, so pretty good. Um, let's see if we can see any phase noise on this signal. We'll do a, uh, uh, let's see here. Let me go back to auto everything. And then let me zoom in on this, uh, on this peak. And then let's uh, try to zoom in as far as we can. Put it back in the middle. Uh, marker function and tracking on. And then we'll change our span some more. And we are, uh, I can't read it from this angle. Our span is 20 kilohertz. So 10 kilohertz. So the, each, each division is two kilohertz. Uh, so two kilohertz is down at, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 dB. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's a pretty nice little oscillator. Uh, all right. So, uh, put that in my that in my drawer and know that if I need a nice clean uh, clean signal there we go